country the way that we can be unified. Doug Jones, the Democrat, becoming the first member of his party to be elected to the U.S. Senate from Alabama in 25 years. It's not over, and it's going to take some time. Thank you. Fox News has obtained 375 of the text messages between those FBI officials who worked on the Mueller probe. We've read them, and as it turns out, they hate Donald Trump. In just the last two months, we've seen two terrorist attacks in New York City carried out by men who were here as a result of failed immigration policies. The lottery system and chain migration, we're going to end them fast. From the big screen to the Oval Office, The Rock once again fueling the rumors about a 2020 run. Seriously, would you run? I would, I'm seriously considering it, yes. Well, you know. Hey. And I love going to the diners, but every once in a while, it's nice to be on the couch and not eating, you know, 3,000 calories. That's right. We were so. at a diner yesterday in Alabama talking about yep. this election. The votes were coming in last night, and that's what we're going to be talking about as our top story. This is our Fox News alert. It is an upset in the state of Alabama. Democrat Doug Jones coming out on top against Republican Roy Moore in that special election to fill the Senate seat that was left vacant by Attorney General Jeff Sessions. But Judge Moore refuses to concede, saying this race is isn't over yet, it's too close to call, according to him. Jonathan Seary live for us in Montgomery, Alabama, with the very latest. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning to you, Todd, Steve, and Ainsley. You know, Doug Jones is the first Democrat to win a Senate election in Alabama since 1992. This is a solidly red state, but with his Republican opponent, Roy Moore, facing allegations of sexual impropriety, the normal partisan dynamics went out the window. Alabama has been at a crossroads. We have been at crossroads in the past. Yes. And unfortunately, we have usually taken the wrong fork. Right Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you took the right road. But Roy Moore, who rode to the polls on horseback, has yet to concede the race. His campaign, hoping Moore's vote count would come within half a percentage point of Jones, which would trigger a recount. What we've got to do is wait on God and let this process play out. I know it's late. We can't wait and have everybody wait till after 11 o'clock. Uh, but the votes are still coming in, and we're looking at that. But with Jones coming in at 49.9% of the vote to Moore's 48.4, a one and a half point difference, a recount appears unlikely. President Trump weighed in on Twitter saying, congratulations to Doug Jones on a hard fought victory. The right in votes played a very big factor, but a win is a win. The people of Alabama are great and the Republicans will have another shot at this seat in a very short period of time. It never ends. And you know what the president is saying about these right in votes being a factor, it's entirely possible the margin of victory was so narrow, many Republicans were saying that while they couldn't vote for a Democrat, they were going to write in the name of a conservative other than Roy Moore. A total of 23,000, nearly 23,000 write-in votes cast in this election. Back to you guys. Hey, Jonathan Seri, live in Alabama with the very latest. Thank you very much. Uh, we should know by the end of this week, early next week, who exactly those write-in votes were for. I would suspect a lot of them are for Luther Strange. He's currently holding the seat uh, that was vacated by Jeff Sessions. Keep in mind, President Trump went down to Alabama for a, a big Luther rally to rally him uh, around the folks during the primary over Roy Moore because the president had said that uh, Roy Moore couldn't win. And as it turns mm -hmm. out, he was right. Mitch McConnell also uh, was supporting Luther Strange. Both of them wanted him to win. The president just tweeted about it. He said, the reason I originally endorsed Luther Strange and his numbers went up mightily is that I said Roy Moore will not be able to win the general election. I was right. Roy worked hard, but the deck was stacked against him. Well, here's uh, just one of the other things, as you remember, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, because uh, Luther Strange sitting in Congress right now, he was supported by the GOP establishment right. and Mitch McConnell. And to many Republicans, in, especially Steve Bannon, uh, he represents the swamp. They wanted to drain right. the swamp. And so rather than support the GOP candidate, the establishment candidate in Luther Strange, uh, Steve Bannon went uh, 100% behind 
this guy. This is what happens more. when when Republicans don't stick together, and they're you know Democrats are good at that. They're de they're good at sticking together and being loyal. You have this division um, amongst the establishment and the Steve Bannon right. people, and so you know neither side is winning, and the Republicans lose as, as a result. But also this was you know with all of these sexual allegation um, allegations against Roy Moore. A lot of women that were going to the polls, you said yesterday people are holding their noses, they go to the polls. It's really hard as a female to go to the polls and, and vote yeah. for someone, even though those allegations were so long ago, even though they are just allegations. After Harvey Weinstein, it's just hard. I think this is a, a referendum on Harvey Weinstein, not on President Trump. And even that said, it is not that much of a win, less than two points as it stands now. And let's take a look at the balance of power as it stands in the Senate next year when uh, Mr. Jones is presumably sworn. It will be 51 Republicans. 49 Democrats. And that begs the question, what is going to happen on issues? It seems to me that there's a premium on getting tax reform officially done before right. the end of the year. And then next year, we worry about things like infrastructure and welfare. And let's worry about what's going on at the FBI. Mm -hmm. uh, you know there's a special counsel, a special investigator, Robert Mueller's team, is looking into the possibility of collusion. Well, remember, it was a couple of weeks ago, uh, it was revealed that that uh, guy right there who was pictured, Peter Strzok, he was removed from the Mueller team, and people were going, why exactly? Because he was placed at HR. Well, it, it turns out he was having an affair with a government lawyer who was also on the Mueller team uh, last year uh, by the name of uh, Lisa Page. And they, they had exchanged something like 10,000 text messages, right? In the text messages, it was revealed that they were anti-Trumpers. Well, Fox News obtained 375 of them yesterday, and we've got some of the exchanges. All right, so I'm going to play Lisa Page, and you're going to pay, play Peter Strzok. Oh, I want to play. Okay, let me, let me okay. Play First of all, I don't like using the Lord's name in vain, but she does in these, so this is from her. I am quoting her. She writes, God, Trump is, loathsome, is a loathsome human. Mr. He writes... Mr. Strzok writes, yet he... May win. They wrote many in the text, but we think it meant May. Good for Hillary. OMG. Oh my God. Again, uh, he's an idiot. God, Hillary should win 100 million to zero. In another passage, and this was on uh, August the 6th, as it turns out, uh, Page said this. And maybe you're meant to stay where you are because you're meant to protect the country from that menace. Thanks. It's absolutely true that we're both very fortunate. And of course, I'll try and approach it that way. I just know it will be tough at times. I can protect our country at many levels. Not sure if that helps. And one more between Lisa Page and Peter Strzok. And this was uh, just before the election after the final debate. Mr. Strzok writes, I am riled up. Trump is a idiot is unable to provide a coherent answer. Uh, there's also one we're not including, and that's from Lisa Page to him, her, uh, her boyfriend. So look, you say we text on that phone when we talk about Hillary because it can't be traced. Uh, you were going, uh, you were just venting because you feel bad that you're gone so much, but that can't be helped right now. So ultimately they were thinking, hey, we're in the FBI. Uh, this might become public someday. Let's use but, another phone. But how slowly did they arrive at that? That really calls into question, oh. you know, they're just base intelligence, you know? Well, they're entitled to have their own opinions about politics, but when they're sharing them like this and, and saying things like they have, um, they have this duty to the country. They're it involved seems, in the investigation. It just seems so shady. We asked you what you thought. Tony on Facebook says this whole thing stinks to high heaven. It's obvious to us all on both sides that D.C. cannot handle being impartial to get the truth. I mean, I heard, I heard on Fox last night that we just need to end this investigation. They either need to end it or start it over. Many other people weighed in on this, too. Yeah, Lori on Twitter said, isn't anyone else tired of all the liberal interference in our justice system? Stop playing politics and look for real crimes. If there was collusion, surely all these highly qualified agents would have hard proof by now. Melanie on Facebook writes, the FBI is wasting their time and our money at this point. When the evidence of conflict of interest is presented to the court, the entire investigation could be thrown out anyway. Well, you know, there are some who are calling for uh, an investigation of the investigators. <laughs> but we had Bill McGurn on from the Wall Street Journal uh, about an hour ago, and he said, let Mr. Mueller do his job, because clearly he is trying to be 
uh, unbiased because he, you know, he threw both those people off the team. Plus, we're learning all these other uh, things about other people. And Rod Rosenstein himself, the guy who uh, appointed Mr. Mueller as the special investigator, is going to be up on Capitol Hill. He's going to be in the hot seat later today. All right, we're going to hand it over to Jill. You know, some more headlines for you and your family. Some more headlines, right? Yep, a lot of news happening today. Good morning to you guys. North Korea is vowing to beef up their nuclear arsenal as nations around the world warn them it's time to stop. Dictator Kim Jong-un telling scientists he wants to increase the quality and number of deadly weapons. But Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says now is the time for diplomacy. We're ready to have the first meeting without precondition. It's not realistic to say we're only going to talk if you come to the table ready to give up your program. Last month, North Korea launched its most advanced missile yet, potentially capable of striking anywhere in the U.S. The suspected Tampa serial killer says he didn't do it. Howell Donaldson III entering a written not guilty plea in court. He's facing charges in connection to four murders over six weeks in the Seminole Heights neighborhood. Police say he's admitted to owning the gun that fired the fatal shots. Prosecutors must st still decide if they will seek the death penalty. Congress choosing to not act on the Iran nuclear deal, putting the decision back in the hands of President Trump. In October, the president announced he would not certify Iran's compliance with the nuclear deal. That decision triggering a 60-day review period during which Congress could have decided to snap to tougher economic sanctions on Iran back into place. President Trump has called the deal unfair to the U.S. This is the best Christmas present these kids will ever get. Every time. Oh, every too. time. There needs right to there. be a network just of those because I know. they are so amazing. Oh. The NBA gets it right. The yeah. whole crowd, everyone stood up. How can you not stand for the national anthem when you see something like that? The whole crowd went wild. Yeah. I know. Thank you, Jillian. That's beautiful. That's just Ending beautiful. on a high note with that newscast. I know he's home for Christmas. He is indeed. All right. Uh, meanwhile, straight ahead, turns out the failed Port Authority bomber taunted President Trump on Facebook before he uh, almost blew himself up. Retired Marine Johnny Joey Jones lost both of his legs in a bomb blast in Afghanistan. He is here to react to that next. And one season ticket holder is so fed up with the anthem protesters, he's now suing the team. Do you think he has a case? New details about the wannabe suicide bomber on a Manhattan subway. Officials are revealing moments before he botched that botched attack. That guy took aim at the president on Facebook, posting, Trump, you failed to protect your nation. He was the only one injured by the low order explosive that he began building a week ago using a metal pipe, Christmas tree lights and metal screws. Retired Marine Corps bomb technician Johnny Joey Jones lost both of his legs fighting for our country when he was uh, in a bomb blast in Afghanistan. And he joins us now from Atlanta. Thank you so much, Joey, for joining us. And thank you for your sacrifice. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So you're you're an expert at this. What exactly went wrong? Well, uh, from the information we're getting, which isn't fully and complete, and there's some conflicting evidence here, but it sounds like he used some sort of black powder, which in and of itself is a low explosive, which means that if you ignite it, it will burn quickly, but you need a container to create overpressure and an explosion. And it sounds like the container itself malfunctioned. There was a weak spot probably where the caps of the pipe went on, and that broke before the overpressure was created, allowing any form of explosion. But if he did use black powder and match heads, which it sounds like he did, those are low explosives. They literally just burn, but they burn really quickly, and they don't create overpressure like you would get from a high explosive. Um, and even the, the homemade kind, like ammonium nitrate, creates this on overpressure to where with something like black powder or match heads or a low explosive, you need a container to help create overpressure in some sort of explosive effect. So if this was bad chemistry, what would have happened if it would have been good chemistry? How serious could, could this have been? Well, it all depends on the size and scope of the object or the size and scope of the main charge and what it was made of. We take all explosives out there and compare them to TNT. For example, two pounds of TNT, that explosive effect, is the same as a much larger poundage of C4. So C4 is weaker than TNT. The most common homemade explosive, ammonium nitrate and fuel oxidizer, is pretty powerful. So a foot-long pipe bomb, depending on the diameter, you're looking at a couple of pounds of ammonium nitrate, could have been pretty bad. But if it isn't employed like a suicide vest, flattened out, his body will absorb half the explosion, which mm -hmm. would be good, obviously, 
for the people around him. So he wasn't very good at making bombs, and it sounds like a low order. It sounds like the container did not do its job in holding the explosion long enough to create overpressure. Uh, so he gets an F on bomb making and an A on keeping people alive. All right. Well, you fought overseas so that we don't have to fight here at home, and we can prevent things like this from happening here at home. You actually lost both of your legs fighting for our country, and then you have this guy that comes in with the chain migration program, and he, they found a note in his passport that says, oh, America, die in your rage. What is your response to how our country is now allowing people to come in because they're a relative, they're not being vetted as well, some people might say? What do you say? I think the idea that a lottery system or a chain migration being how we choose people to come into this country, it, it's risky. It's risky to say the least. I think we have an amazing place here and for generations we fought and died and sacrificed. I know a little bit about that to make it this way. And we just want to make those that come here understand that, appreciate it, and want to buy into it. And if that's through a better vetted system, an overhaul of migration, you can be pro-immigration mm -hmm. and also pro-national security. That's the stance I take, and I hope that our immigration policy somehow eventually reflects that. Johnny Joey Jones, God bless you. Thank you. Coming up, you that's remember it. her pro-Trump dress at the Grammys this morning. Joy Via has something even bigger to drop on America. She has a huge announcement. It is 724 here in New York City. Time now for your news by the numbers. First, 93%. That's the Rotten Tomatoes score for Santa left for a tip on a $17 breakfast Aww. at a diner in Arizona. The anonymous man leaving a note on his bill wishing the staff a Merry Christmas. Each worker got 200 bucks. Aww, that's awesome. So nice. And finally, number one, Hurricane Irma is the top trend Google search of 2017. The Category 4 storm slammed into the Florida coast back in the month of September. And that is some of the news. All right, Joy Villa was the talk of the Grammys when she hit the red carpet in that Make America Great Again dress. You see it right there earlier this year. Well, now the Hollywood outsider has found her own way to make America great again. And here with an exclusive announcement is singer and Trump supporter Joy Villa. Joy, what is your big announcement? Good morning. Good morning. My big announcement is that I am officially launching my exploratory committee into a congressional run for the state of Florida. I'm looking from everywhere to Jacksonville all the way down to Miami. Well, congratulations. Uh, so you want to go to Washington? Uh, what's your platform? Uh, obviously, having talked to you before, you're out to drain the swamp, right? That's right. I mean, have you looked at Congress lately? In the news, we see that they are getting nothing done. They are a house of cards that is tumbling. I mean, health care reform, they couldn't get done. Immigration, they can't get done. They're not working with the president, which means we need to put, uh, put new people in. We need to vote fresh blood in. And we need to really make America great again with people who are going to work for the aims of the president, not lobbyists, not Washington elitists. All right, Joy, I got to ask this. Hollywood, as you may or may not know, uh, not very pro-Trump, not very uh, pro-Republican. How do you think this is going to impact your singing career? <laughs> Well, I'm working on my second album now, so I'll get that out before um, I officially launch my campaign if I were to run. Right now, we're looking to all the areas. We're polling. We're seeing what's going to work. And I'm hoping to scare some of those rhinos that are there that they really need to watch their back. Because just like we, w we just lost this run in Alabama for the Senate, we cannot afford to lose any Congress runs in 2018. I know Hollywood's not going to like me. They already don't like me. That's fine. I'm an independent woman. An independent artist. I've made my own money, hit number one on Billboard, iTunes, and Amazon without Hollywood's help. So I'm hoping to just appeal to the American people and really to get this swamp out of here and get good people who care about America back in Congress. It's and I think uh, Florida deserves good it's representation. Amazing. Joy, it's amazing what happens to your life when you're genuine and you're true to yourself. And you, you were very bold wearing the Trump dress out in Hollywood on the red carpet. Isn't it amazing how that dress took you to number one on you know, Amazon and um, iTunes? Yes. And then now you're, you're exploring the possibility of running for Congress and, and changing our country and trying to make it better. That's right.
That's right. And that's what this is about. Being an artist, you know, I come from a creative standpoint. I see solutions where I think a lot of people don't. I'm not a part of Hollywood elites. I'm not a part of Washington elites. Right. I'm a part of the American populist population. And I truly want to back up the president. I was at the White House uh, the other night, and I got to see the president at the White House Christmas party. Ivanka actually pulled me aside, and she said, I really want you to run. We need more strong women to back up, you know, what America needs. So it's it's looking good. This congressional uh, possibility is looking more and more like a reality, and I'm proud to dive into it. Well, back on October 27th, uh, the president tweeted, good luck to at Joy Villa on her decision to enter That's the right. wonderful world of politics. She has many fans, right. he writes. Well, good luck on the exploratory uh, committee and figuring out whether or not you're going to run down in Florida. If you do win, Thank you. you've already got the uh, election night dress. That's it's true. ready. It's pretty wonderful, exactly. You can go to joyvilla.com or bring joy to Congress if you'd like to donate and check out what my issues are. And it's time to get something done in Congress. Well, That's now a great you need a website. Joy Villa dress. Play on words, right? Now you need the Joy Villa dress. That's right. Since he was running, you wore his That's dress. Right. Now bring joy to Congress. Yeah. All right, Joy. Thank you very That's much right. for joining us live. Please, Steve. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Joy. All right. All right, uh, straight ahead on this Wednesday, the numbers don't lie. A new study says 90% of the media's coverage on the evening news of President Trump in the last three months has been negative. Shocking. Corey Lewandowski, David Bossie say it's proof Trump is right. Both of them live next. Plus, have you guys seen this pic? Hilarious hidden message from this baby. Yes, the baby is sending hidden messages. It's Fox and Friends for this Wednesday. Thank you very much for joining us. A lot to talk yes. to uh, Corey Lewandowski and David Bossie, co-authors of Let Trump Be Trump, soon to be a big bestseller, I got a feeling. I read it this past weekend. It's a great book, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Thanks, uh, Steve. Well, uh, we're ta everybody's talking this morning about these text messages between the two FBI agents who had been on the Mueller probe, uh, but then were kicked off by Robert Mueller. And as it turns out, they were real Trump haters, uh, to begin with, and, you know, they had inappropriate things to say about everything. Uh, we are learning this because a letter was sent from the DOJ last night to Bob Goodlatte, who is the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, because they've got Rod Rosenstein uh, in the hot seat today. Corey, as you look at these text messages, what do they prove to you? Well, Steve, what this proves to me is that there is a true deep state out there. There are people who uh, do not support this president, who continue to serve in the government. And look, these were career government officials. Number one, what no one's talking about is these two are having an illicit affair between the two of them. That's mm -hmm. number one, okay? Number two, this person who sent these text messages is still working for the FBI, and they've taken the person and moved them to the Human Resources Department. I don't understand it, Steve. How does this continue to occur? So they can hire new bad FBI agents. I mean, this guy has to go. He can't stay as a member of the FBI. All right, what do you make of the media bias? Um, obviously, many people are wondering if there's bias in the FBI, but then there's also bias in the media because according to the Media Research Center, they documented all year long the media coverage and they highlighted these three months, September, October, and November. And look at that. Everything in red are the negative stories. The green you can barely even see are the positive stories. And this is uh, this was ABC, NBC, and CBS. So in September, they had 359 negative comments, 31 positive. October October 435 negative, 41 positive, and November 320 negative, 33 positive. Now, what do you what do you make of this? Because they're supposed to not be biased. This is the evening news. Well, this is what the president has been fighting for almost two years now. It, the entire campaign, he fought these types of numbers, this type of bias in the media. And during his first year in the White House, he's done had to do the same thing. You look at just this past week. ABC News, CNN, The Washington Post, and others have had to uh, disavow stories by their best <coughs> reporters. They've lied to the American people, set up a narrative that is false about this president, and then they have to retract him. And of course, they retract him on page, you know, 98 in a small paragraph. But the damage is done. And that's why this president has to fight back. That's why he uses his Twitter so effectively. And that's why he speaks past the media directly to the American people. Even though it seems a lot of Republicans you'll hear say, I don't want him to do that. There are a whole bunch who say he needs to do that. Um, let's get down to Alabama now. Doug Jones won the Alabama Senate seat, or at least it so appears. So what does this mean for the future of President Trump's agenda? 
agenda, a settled debate between Steve and I. I think that Doug Jones may sort of have to be a, a Republican-like because he is in Alabama, and a Democrat in Alabama is like a Republican. Steve says he's going to be a, a Schumer shill. What say you, Corey? Look, I, I have to agree with Steve on this oh. one. I think you've got a very short-term <laughs> U.S. senator. He's there for a couple of years. You're going to get a, a good conservative who's going to run against him and take that seat back, probably Mo Brooks or That's somebody right. like that will come in and step in. Look, that is a seat that should have been held by a Republican. He was a fundamentally flawed candidate. The Republican was. He had a lot of problems. He was not the candidate that Donald Trump supported or endorsed in the primary. And But what you have to look at is the president has now congratulated the new victor and Unlike some other people in the election, he's accepted the election results. Hillary is still yet to accept those election results. So the president's done the right thing, but I don't think you're going to see a conservative Joe Manchin type Democrat in that seat in Alabama. David, how did that happen? How did he become the candidate? Because you had many people that many people now are blaming Mitch McConnell for supporting the establishment, and then that that allowed Roy Moore to get on the ballot. Well, this race, came, you know, came down to very few votes, and I and I so I do put blame on a lot of folks that pulled out their support and then came back in late. We needed uh, to have a Republican in order to to be able to help this president with his very aggressive agenda for the American people and why he got elected. Now, you know, he, the Democrat has won, uh, but I got to tell you, there's blame to go around. But this president didn't support this. Uh, candidate in the primary, uh, you know, he 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 kind of played the hand that was dealt to him, and so we wanted uh, a Republican to get up here to help him in his Senate agenda. But you know, uh, the elections uh, and the people of Alabama have spoken. Well, and the Republicans still hold a. Uh a slim majority in the U.S. Senate. All right, uh, Corey, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, David just mentioned the president's agenda. Uh, Mr. Trump is going to be giving a speech later on today. He's trying to push taxes across the finish line. What is What have you heard is going on in the Senate? Well, Steve, I think what you're going to find is that they're very close to getting this bill done. It looks like uh, as early as Monday or Tuesday of next week, there could be a vote in the Senate. It could then go over to the House for a vote either Tuesday or potentially Wednesday. And we could have this on the president's desk for a signature before Christmas. And wouldn't that be a great Christmas gift? It would be the biggest tax cut that our country has seen ever, the largest tax cut uh, that we've ever had, relief for small businesses, relief for middle class Americans, and it is a campaign promise that he made and he is following through on and I think that you're going to see this on the president's desk in the beginning part of next week probably a week from today he'll be signing this let me Stay ask you this tuned. final question do you think there are going to be some concessions to Republicans in salt states those high state and local tax states where you have a situation where they cave to, to those individuals so that those Republicans don't lose in 2018? Or are they just going to say, guys, you're on your own. We still think we're going to carry the House, even if you lose. No, no, no. They're, they're, this is a work in progress. And I think that they are clearly trying to figure out whether they have to, uh, you know, lower the individual rates to get some of those folks along, whether it's increasing the corporate rate by a point or two to get the, uh, the, the the salt uh, uh, issue taken care of and make sure that there's money there to pay for it. But they're going to get this bill done. The Republicans in Congress are working, you know, incredibly well together, both in the House and the Senate. And this conference is working hard. This president is excited. I think that we're going to see this by Christmas. And we all this economy, which is booming, booming. Uh, over the last 10 months is just going to take off once this tax reform package is, is passed. Well, pretty soon I think we'll see some details. Uh, Corey and David, we thank you very much for joining us from our nation's capital. I'm sure both of you would say the, your new book called Let Trump Be Trump would be the perfect stopping, uh, st stocking stuffer for this Christmas and holiday season. We agree, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> or you agree. can put it in a box if it doesn't fit in the stocking. <laughs> so many options. Well. All right, guys, thank you very much. Before we thank go over you. to Jillian, I did lose the bet to Steve, so now I have to sing whatever he wants wants me to sing at today's uh, oh, 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 karaoke oh, party. Okay, we're going to talk about that a little uh, later. Are you okay. a singer, Jillian? No, I yeah, can't sing. I have the worst singing voice can. ever. I can't sing, I can't dance. So basically, I can't That makes two of Anything us. Anything fun.
All right, let's talk about the headlines right now this morning before I embarrass myself some more. An illegal immigrant who was deported three times now charged in a cold case murder. Juan Moraz Flores is already serving time for illegally re-entering the country, but he could now spend even more time behind bars. The Mexican citizen is accused of shooting and killing Jose Munoz following an argument at his auto shop in Texas back in 2007. Police got a tip about the slaying last year. Now detectives say they found comparisons between Moraz Flores and physical evidence at the murder scene. A New Orleans Saints season ticket holder suing his favorite NFL team over national anthem protests. The fan says he paid $8,000 for tickets but only went to one game. The lawsuit claims players who stay in the tunnel or take a knee prevent his family from enjoying themselves and that the booze from the crowd make for a bad family environment. He's asking for a full refund. A toddler has the best reaction to sitting down for a picture with Santa. Instead of smiling or crying, he uses sign language begging for help. I bet he didn't know that, though. His mom tweeting the photo that quickly went viral. Her son, Samuel, is, by the way, now 13 years old. He was just uh, about a year when this photo was taken in Utah, but it's so great that she reposts it every year. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> so she was teaching him sign language, and he said, yes. help. Yes, but, I mean, debatable whether or not he did <laughs> right, that on purpose. Right. But it could be just no, like my, a they, kid We're all teaching our kids sign language now. Like, my daughter will say please, and yeah. she knows how to say more, and thank you, and yeah. All right. So I bet that the mom did teach him. Anyway, I think she did. Thank you. Anyway, 